Does your router have a Wi-Fi Smart Connect feature? If so, are you trying to figure out if you should implement this or are you trying to get more information about the Wi-Fi Smart Connect feature? If so, you've come to the right place. In today's episode from Network From Home, we'll be talking all about the Wi-Fi Smart Connect feature. We'll be talking about what it does, how to implement it, and even more than that, if you should implement it at all. You might be a little surprised to find that maybe it's not all that it's cracked up to be. I'll let you determine that for yourself, but in this episode, we'll break that all down for you. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we wanna get into here is what is the Wi-Fi Smart Connect feature? And we'll walk through the basics here. The thing to understand about the Wi-Fi Smart Connect feature is that this feature was developed at about the same time that routers were coming out that were dual band. A dual band router is a router that broadcasts Wi-Fi signals at different wireless frequencies. So you'll see your 2G network, you'll see your 5G wireless network, and with the advent of Wi-Fi 6, you may now see a 6G wireless network being broadcast by your router. Obviously the challenge here is that all of these different frequencies, the different frequencies of these wireless networks, they show up as separate networks when you're connecting your devices to Wi-Fi. So the challenge there is maybe trying to understand, okay, which frequency should I connect to? Which one is best for my device in a given situation? See, Wi-Fi Smart Connect, they tried to do the smart thing here. See what I did there? They tried to do the smart thing and take this all out of the hands of the user so they wouldn't get confused or make the wrong decision about which Wi-Fi network to connect to. So basically what Wi-Fi Smart Connect does is rather than you having multiple wireless networks show up when you try to connect a device to your Wi-Fi, you now only have one wireless network to connect to. And what's going on behind the scenes is that your router is automatically assigning that particular device to a wireless frequency based upon a number of factors. This can be the signal strength with the router, it can be the type of device that's connecting to the router because some devices will only function on a certain frequency band. All of those decisions here are happening behind the scenes and all the user has to do is connect to that one wireless network and that's it. They don't have to worry about anything else. So let's break down the main features of Wi-Fi Smart Connect. The first one is load balancing. And what I mean by this is if your router is a, let's say it's a dual band router, it has two frequencies that it broadcasts its Wi-Fi networks on. What if you have 10 or 20 devices connect to your Wi-Fi network, but they all connect to the 5G frequency? Well, what you might see is that those devices will use up all the available bandwidth for the 5G frequency and it will cause slow internet access for everybody. But with Wi-Fi Smart Connect, what it will do is maybe it will take half of those devices, put them on the 5G wireless network, and the other five will go on the 2.4 gigahertz network. So that way, both of these wireless networks, there's plenty of bandwidth for all of the devices that are connected to them. So in this case, it would alleviate any issues that result from an overpopulation of a particular wireless frequency band. The next piece of this that I kind of touched upon already is just optimizing the connection for particular devices. As I mentioned, particular devices can only connect to a certain frequency wireless network. Wi-Fi Smart Connect will do all of that for you. If it reach out, reaches out to a device, sees that it can only connect on a 2.4 gigahertz network, 
it will automatically assign it to that 2.4 gigahertz network. Lastly, this is another one I touched upon. You only have one wireless network to connect to instead of multiple. So the key feature here is simplicity. Wi-Fi Smart Connect, the whole goal of it is to make things simpler and easier for the users in their home and in their home network. Now let's get into the more complicated question when it comes to Wi-Fi Smart Connect. Should you be using it? And in my opinion, and from my experience, I would say that although the goal of Wi-Fi Smart Connect is to make things easier on the end user, I've actually found that in a lot of ways it can make things more complicated and it can actually negatively impact your internet experience as a result. And I can give you an example of this here. So I have wireless speakers in my home. They're in multiple rooms, different rooms in my home. They're all connected to the Wi-Fi. And I have the ability with these speakers to play music through the speakers from my laptop. What is the catch here? The catch is that in order for my laptop to send music to my wireless speakers, to play music through them, they all have to be on the same frequency wireless network. So essentially, if all my speakers are on the 2.4 gigahertz wireless network, but my laptop's on the 5 gigahertz network, I won't have any luck. I won't be able to play my music through these speakers. So as you might be putting together here, the challenge is if I use Wi-Fi Smart Connect and it assigns my speakers behind the scenes to the 2.4 gigahertz network and it assigns my laptop to the 5 gigahertz network, I won't be able to play music on my speakers and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't override that rule unless I go in and modify the settings, which is something we'll get into here. The next piece here is that in some instances, Wi-Fi Smart Connect will let you to determine the rules that the router uses to assign devices to different frequencies of wireless networks. The downside of this, first of all, is that some devices don't allow you to change the rules for Wi-Fi Smart Connect. So in my case, I can either turn it on or I can turn it off. And when it's on, the device, the router, runs the show. I can't make any changes to override any of those Smart Connect decisions. So in my case of having my laptop and my wireless speakers, if Wi-Fi Smart Connect assigns my speakers and laptop to different frequency wireless networks, there's nothing I can do about it. On the other side of the coin, if you do have rules, if you have the ability to go in and modify these rules for Wi-Fi Smart Connect, honestly, it can make things a lot more complicated than just selecting the wireless network that the device should be on anyway. So some of the factors that go into these rules here are signal strength. Essentially, how good of a signal does the device have with the router? You can set it so if it has a good signal strength, it uses 5G. If it has a poor signal strength, it uses 2.4G. You can also change settings based upon the type of device and the type of wireless network that it uses, the wireless network technology. The other possible rule is that if one of the wireless network bands gets utilized a certain percent, you can have Wi-Fi Smart Connect kick devices to the other frequency of wireless network. But as you can see here, things can get complicated quickly if you're setting all these variables. It just is something that if you're not a technical person, you're not going to want to play around with those settings and it makes things a lot more complicated. Whereas the whole goal of Wi-Fi Smart Connect was to make things easier in the first place. One of the main reasons that I say you shouldn't use Wi-Fi Smart Connect is that you may either have no control of it at all, or the rules might be more complicated and it might be more than you signed up for. 
Whereas in reality, if you understand the different frequencies of wireless networks and when to use them, it's really not that complicated. And I've put together a video previously where I talk about these different wireless frequencies and how and when you should use these, these different wireless frequencies. So that will really break things down for you. And if you have that information, Wi-Fi Smart Connect doesn't really have much to offer you because you know when to use these wireless frequencies. Okay, so the last thing we wanna go over here is how we get to this Wi-Fi Smart Connect setting. Let's say you wanna turn it on for some reason or maybe the more likely scenario, if you want to turn Wi-Fi Smart Connect off, let's walk through what we need to do here. Okay, the first thing we have to do here is we wanna log into our router settings. If you're unsure about how to do this and how to get to your router settings, I will link to a video up above that I've previously made. It talks about how to get to your router settings, how to log in, and some common issues or difficulties that people have when getting to their router settings. Okay, once we're squared away there, we just wanna log into our router settings so let's do that now. Okay, so now that we're in our router settings, the next thing we wanna do here, we want to go to wireless. This view might look a little bit different for you based upon the make and model of your router, but what you should understand is that this Wi-Fi Smart Connect setting will most likely be somewhere in the wireless settings. Perhaps it might even be under the advanced settings. In my case, it's in the basic settings. You see it right up here at the top, Smart Connect. All you have to do is turn this switch on. And as I mentioned, I don't have the ability to configure the rules of Wi-Fi Smart Connect. So in turning this on, I don't have anything else to click here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn this off. I definitely don't want Wi-Fi Smart Connect on my router. But it's as simple as that. Once you get into your router settings, the Smart Connect feature should be pretty easy to find and you'll be able to go ahead and turn it off or turn it on as you wish. All right, everybody, that's just about everything we wanted to cover today when it comes to Wi-Fi Smart Connect. If you found this information useful, please give it a like so it gets shared with others and they have the opportunity to learn from this content as well. If this type of content is useful and interesting to you, please subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna continue making content similar to this moving forward with plenty of more helpful hints and tips when it comes to your home network. And as always, thanks for joining this episode from Network From Home. We'll catch you on the next one.